Bloomberg is one of the largest technology companies in the world, pulling in over $9 billion in 2017 with over 20,000 employees. You have probably heard of Michael Bloomberg or maybe read news on their website, but what exactly does Bloomberg even do and how did it get so big? Make sure to stick around till the end to find out. Welcome to Hari Hobbies. So it all started when Michael Bloomberg graduated from John Hopkins University with an electrical engineering degree. He would then get an MBA at Harvard Business School and land a job at an investment firm in New York City called Salomon Brothers. His first task was very tedious with him having to count out and organize millions of stocks and bonds. But thanks to his quick thinking and remarkable work ethic, he'd quickly rise up and become a partner by 1972 at the age of 30. His next task was to run the firm's information technology system, which is again very, very tedious and boring. This was seen as the most unglamorous portion of the business as it was far from the actual deals and actually generating revenue. But Michael did deal with it. Unfortunately though, in 1981, Solomon Brothers was sold and Michael was sent off. It wasn't all bad though, he got a $10 million severance package which he used to set up a new information technology company named Innovative Market Solutions. This was very much inspired by his work at Solomon Brothers and he wanted to make brokerage work much easier and less tedious. And this desire to make the process more efficient is what would lead to his first invention. Until now, finding the value of one security versus another was very tedious and there really was no progress since the 1960s. It was just a bunch of guys using number two pencils working all day. He imagined building a system that took information from several different investment types like stocks, bonds, and currencies and revealing the position of a firm at any given point. This opened up hidden investment opportunities as it revealed previously inaccessible data. To achieve this, he hired four Salomon Brothers former employees. One of these four people was Tom Secunda who would start writing analytics programs and get to work on what would soon become the Bloomberg Terminal. Their first target customer was Merrill Lynch's Capital Market Division. Michael pitched the idea alone to the head of the division, Ed Moriarty. And when Michael finished presenting, Moriarty asked the head of the software division how long it would take them to create it themselves. The head of the software development team, Alexander, told him that if they didn't get any new work for the next six months, then they can start right after. Michael immediately promised that he would be able to get it done in six months before they would even be able to start and that they didn't have to buy it if they didn't like it. And with that, they really started to bring the Bloomberg terminal to life. They had a significant advantage as they knew exactly what investment firms were looking for as they had all worked at one before. And this led them to create the Bloomberg terminal which is still heavily used even today. It is regarded as a professional investment system for the financial marketplace. So clearly, the Bloomberg terminal was of great use, but the only thing is that it is only targeted at institutional investment firms. It is simply too expensive for most individual investors and is unfeasible for them. Today, a subscription to Bloomberg services costs $24,000 per user, but if you buy two or more, it's only $20,000 per user. That's still a lot of money, but it is a sizable discount. And this is probably why you never knew what Bloomberg did as they target such a niche demographic that most of us don't have any connection to. The first system was not elegant or complex, but it was resourceful and got the job done. The system provided price quotes and allowed messaging through a secure proprietary network. And for the end user, it was a Windows based application which made it really convenient to use it with Excel. Excel is one of the most crucial programs for the financial industry, so this was very important. And as technology has evolved, they have also started offering an online application that can be accessed through mobile devices. Portfolio managers and brokers have the ability to use Bloomberg Anywhere services to access real-time market information anywhere in the world. This makes it very convenient and is a huge advantage to the Bloomberg subscription. But it wasn't an easy road though, there was a lot of competition from big corporations as well. Thomson Reuters Icon was your biggest competition which still holds 25% of the market share even today. Bloomberg still has a slight edge holding 30% of the market share but clearly Icon is not a joke. They also offer better value charging $4,000 less per year at $20,000 per year. And it's not just them, there are also several other companies who have sizable chunks of market share and are also cheaper as well. Companies like Factset, Capital IQ, and Symphony, just to name a few. Bloomberg is able to deal with all of this competition because they are always one step ahead by being the first in the market. This has made them the gold standard for financial market news, data, and trading tools. 
Today, they are almost synonymous with Wall Street and this lead helps them out more than you would think. Even though other services might offer something cheaper and still provide the same value, it's just convenient to stay with Bloomberg. Trading firms don't need to retrain staff and they don't have to have downtime while software is being updated on their computers. They have been there for so long and it is just easier to use the same software year after year. And for big firms like Goldman Sachs, an extra $4,000 really is not worth going through all of that hassle. Now there is some disadvantages with using Bloomberg, the biggest of which is that they are slow to adapt to new technology. It took them a pretty long time to adapt to 64-bit systems. But for the financial industry, this really doesn't matter because they're not going to be trying to remodel a car or something. They simply need data and they don't need the most up-to-date technology in order to do that. Plus, it's not like Bloomberg never adapts, it just takes them a little bit longer. Overall, Bloomberg is able to fend off a lot of competition as they were the first in the market. Firms are already used to them and they don't see a need to change unless someone else offers something significantly different. The slightly cheaper price is really no big deal. So clearly, Bloomberg terminals really took off and even to this day, Bloomberg terminals make up most of their revenue. But since then, they have also gone on other ventures that are not technology driven. For example, they opened their own news outlet in 1991 called Bloomberg Business News. And they opened offices in New York, London, Toronto, Washington, Tokyo, and many more. Bloomberg News has always had a very editor-driven culture and they have a very specific way of writing their articles. In fact, they have their own book on how to write Bloomberg articles called The Bloomberg Way, A Guide for Reporters and Editors. They even launched their own TV channel in 1994 called Bloomberg Information TV. They had a variety of business related shows and news about the state of the economy and the financial industry as a whole. They also had their own magazine called Bloomberg Business Week. This is a weekly American business magazine, but they didn't create this one though. This magazine actually first published in September of 1929. And it wasn't until July of 2009, almost 80 years later, that they acquired this magazine. The magazine had fell on hard times after the 2008 economic recession and Bloomberg would buy it for 2 to 5 million dollars. As it is clear, since the terminal, they have also gone on several other ventures as well. Today, Bloomberg is a major global provider of financial news and information. They offer real-time and historic price data, financial data, trading news and analyst coverage as well as general news and sports. They have several services that span across radio, television and magazines. They offer professional analysis tools for financial professionals. But even to this day, Bloomberg's key revenue earner remains the Bloomberg Terminal, which is an integrated platform that streams together price data, financials, trading data, and news. He was also New York City's 108th mayor serving from 2002 to 2013. There has also been a lot of rumors that he's going to be running for president, but he has confirmed that he'd rather do less talking and more actual work. He says that he would rather roll his sleeves up and get to work and that he has no intention for running for president. But despite that, Michael Bloomberg and his company are really quite inspirational. Bloomberg is a company that most of us have heard about but really didn't know what they did. We have seen their magazines and news articles but it was actually their background contribution to Wall Street, their terminals, that really made them a corporate giant. They have truly revolutionized the financial industry, eliminating the need for tedious busywork and they have allowed for much more effective investing across Wall Street. Given this contribution, it's no wonder why they're so successful. But that's all I have for you guys on Bloomberg. Make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next. Also, if you guys like this video then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you would like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on next one.